Part of the human experience is our joy in that which is good, true, and beautiful. Our eye seems to delight in shape, color, and design. We witness these patterns not only in that which we create, but also in the work of God as creator, in the heavens and certainly in living things. So the idea that evolution takes place through small, random events seems shockingly out of place in such an ordered universe. If the universe were the product of chance, the odds are overwhelming that the universe would be life prohibiting. If the idea is that you have a purely undirected process producing the appearance of design and the undirected process is not guided or directed in any way. When you look at biochemical systems, you see a lot of different things that don't look like they were unplanned, don't look like they were spontaneous. They look very much like they needed uh, forethought and, and intelligence to produce them. The assumption in all of these observations is that randomness always leads to disorder, or that randomness is the equivalent of purposelessness. But is that necessarily the case? As in most things involving science, the truth is much more complex and awe-inspiring. Let's just kind of back up for a second and take a breath and talk about random processes. Here's a random process that I think we'll all celebrate. Um, if you have let's say many children. Are any two of them identical, not twins? No. And why is that? That's a random process. That's the sorting of chromosomes, okay, in the making of sperm and egg. It's also a little bit of genetic recombination in the making of sperm and egg. We, we, the genes get shuffled just a little bit in each generation. That's random. That's a contributor to, to the diversity of people, even the diversity of individual families. And there's, that's the component of randomness. So there's a lot of information out there that tries to uh, redefine science and redefine evolution in ways that are simply untenable to people. So for example, the idea that uh, evolution is only a random process um, doesn't make any sense to scientists. Um, because look at all the order that exists in the biological world and the process of natural selection, uh, which is upheld by, uh, by some uh, people as if it's the, uh, the, you know, a condemnation of science itself. It, in fact, is a, a beautiful process by, that is the basic process of ordering of the natural world, that it's not random, but it's uh, a matter of how organisms uh, evolve their, uh, their, their beautiful adaptations to the world and are tested when the world changes. And we can see this through geological time scales and even in the present. Uh, as the environment changes, that it tests the uh, survivor, uh, uh, the survival ability of, uh, of organisms. What's not random is the process of natural selection. So Darwin perceived that the, those that had, that competed a bit better, those that had a little bit of an advantage, whether you want to think about out on the savanna, you know, the, the gazelle that's just a little faster than the other gazelles, that whatever genetic recipe made it, it goes into making those, that gazelle a little bit faster, that that genetic recipe is going to be preserved over the other genetic recipes. And that's the, that, that process of some genetic combinations being better than others, that's the non-random part of evolution. I think God's creation is continuing to unfold. And as it continues to unfold and we have new species that are being uh, generated, that's that's not in absence of God's creative power and, and God's creative work as he's, as my view is that he's using evolutionary processes to bring out more and more diversity along the way just as using gravitational forces to hold the universe together in, in, in a way. We've lost a lot of that um, because we kind of have God make the stuff and then, okay, that's done. And we talk about creation as something from the past, you know, a past activity of God that he's finished with. This view that sees the focus on God's functioning and control and reign as he rests in his temple is one that has a much more hands-on theology connected to it. 
uh, in that sense, creation continues today. We usually think of it as God sustaining. Randomness creates the great variation we see in all living things, and yet the selection process isn't random at all. But what is most important to recognize is that these scientific explanations do not rule out God's intimate, purposeful involvement in His creation. Understanding the role of randomness in evolutionary history is one of the challenges for us as Christians. But it's not unlike the daily events of our own lives, like a phone call from an old friend or a chance meeting on an airplane. All of these can seem like small random things in the moment, but when viewed through the lens of time and experience, we often see how God has worked through that which seems random.